All right, so um, we're going to do a start working on a four four page article today. Um, so last week we were looking at we had this downloaded little item over here, kind of a, a mock up of you know some ways of doing it. Um, and again, I want you guys to kind of find find some stuff that's going to help you out. Okay, um, like I said, even if you've been doing this for twenty years um you're gonna want to have that reference okay so the, one of the keys to success in um all your design artistic endeavors is having reference okay um and for us typically it's going to be visual reference so that means um either having you know the thing right right there so you know if you want to i don't know you want to draw an iphone you're going to have one sitting there um <coughs> or you're gonna have photographs um, in order to work with. So um, you don't wanna kind of imagine this stuff because um, our minds will pay, play serious tricks upon us. Um, even, you know, when you're looking at like people, even, you know, you, you gotta kind of have that reference whether they're sitting there or to photograph um, in order to do it. You know, it, and it's, it's because there's, there's um, there's details that are in those, those um, visual references that key us into new things um, and key us into that kind of creativity. And, and all design, all art is kind of inspired, um, inspired by life, experiences, et cetera. So, um, you know, have some books, have some visual reference, um, you know, looking online or, um, you know, drawing it, um, you know, get stuff there. Does that make sense? Don't just try to go, oh, I'm going to go design a magazine today and, and not have that stuff with you. It's, it's one, it's going to make your life so much better. I mean, it's going to make, make it make sense and it's going to go much, much quicker. Uh, and you're going to get a better quality product out of it by doing that type of thing. Okay. So even if it's just, you know, subtle things of like, hey, the idea of a picture spreading across uh, two pages, that might work. Or, um, you know, one page with some kind of text on top. I'm like, wow, that's kind of cool. I like that a lot, right? So you can do that or just kind of positioning things or how do I arrange a series of photos or images, okay? Um, I mean, this is kind of nice. They did some circles and they put images in the circles and then they um, outlined them, right? They put a stroke on the circles in order to have the photos in there and there's some visual overlap and so forth. Um, you know, and something like this may be done in InDesign. Or you may go, hey, I'm going to work that up in Photoshop or something like that. So it depends on the complexity of what you're trying to do. Something like this with text on top of a photo, uh, this is typically going to be um, InDesign. But even here, we've got the difference between this picture and this picture. They're both full page images, but this one's got a full bleed on it, whereas this one has a border upon it, right? So there's this little white border going all the way around. So again, it's those kind of things will help you um, to rearrange things. Up here, we've got pictures and they all have a little border. Down here, we've got two pictures and there is no border, right? There's that direct overlap on them. So <laughs> having those kind of visual references is gonna be really crucial to helping you get moving, but also just to get, get a good quality image going. Now, um, the idea of a picture on the right, left, whatever, it's your choice, but remember, we always typically are reading left to right. Okay, so if you're going to put something, you know, a compelling image like we did down here, you know, put it on the left and that's going to gear us over or push us over to the right where we're going to, in this case, get the, the articles going. Okay, does that make sense so far, everybody? Yes. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to get rid of that. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to get, let me get a couple more examples here. I'm just going to see. And again, you know, don't be afraid to kind of go through and spend some time in here. Obviously, I'm going to do it very quick because of what we're doing today. But, you know, there's a lot out there and you don't necessarily want to go to the first um, thing. And, and you got to, you know, go through and get the feel and see what's going on. Um, and like I said, there are some templates and stuff that you can use. But, you know, when it comes to InDesign, you know, I typically am. 
doing what we're doing here exactly is meaning looking at some things and getting some ideas and then coming back and doing them in my own way. Okay. Um, I very rarely have I ever downloaded kind of a template. Now, again, it might be something for a brochure, um, you know, might be okay. Everything's kind of in there. It's got the folds and stuff like that. But, um, you know, for the most part, I'm kind of just looking at these things for visual reference and then coming back. Now, I like this picture for like a second page. We're doing a four page spread. So I don't particularly like this for the first page of the, our two, the first two pages of our four page spread, but I like this for the second page. So I'm gonna kind of, let me see if I can grab this over, drop this down. Okay, that worked good. So I'm gonna put this one down here. Well, that's our second page. So we'll put that over here. Oops. This is going to go back down here for that one. Put this over. Remember, all this stuff off to the right or to the left, none of that's going to show up on your print. Okay, so it's fine to have it there. You don't necessarily need to take it off. I typically do before I would send it off to be printed um, at a commercial printer or something like that, just so they don't get confused. Um, but any kind of stuff out there, same thing when you're an InDesign or Illustrator, rather, you've got like all those other things um, when you're working them up. They're not going to hurt, but I typically will clean it up or make a duplicate copy with just what I want to have printed um, before I send it to the printer because they'll just get confused, believe it or not. You know, it's just easier to get rid of it, but you can keep it in your working files, meaning the files that you're um, putting together. So I'd like that for a second page. And we'll put something together for that. And then let's go, let me find a, a first page spread. Uh, where to go? Come back here. Oh, I put them on the wrong things. Yeah. So I'm looking over here. This is just, and again, the cool thing about the, the what Google's doing is they'll bring up stuff that's kind of related. Um, you know, in this case, it's all magazine layouts, but. Sometimes uh, when you get to pictures and illustrations, it'll bring you up stuff that's close to the style that you like <clears throat> or the stuff you've been looking at. Um, just looking through here. See, that's so similar to what we just did. That's kind of nice in this one here. We've got this picture within there, but maybe we'll do a pull quote. We'll put a big pull quote in. That might be kind of fun. Let me just see. It's kind of nice there. Um, Again, if you have a lot of text heavy, there you can go here. You can see there's something pretty text heavy. I'm gonna keep it kind of light. Um, I like what we call white space or open area. Um, that's pretty good to be. This is kind of nice. Got a couple of pictures to the top, a nice type treatment here. There's a pull quote down here. <clears throat> and they just did some like, um, funky stuff with the quotation mark. They only have one instead of two. They're getting a little artistic. They've got some drop caps. They've got a little subhead. Um, nice type here. Let me take this. I think we can work with this. It'll give us something to do here. And uh, let me close this off. Okay. So we've got, we're gonna kind of use this as a kind of a visual to get going over here. I'm just gonna scale this back. All right, so I'm gonna All right, so I'm just kind of getting this so I could see it. I'm gonna get the screen a little bigger there. All right, so we've got some pictures at the top. Now I like this orange, ground. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to actually give it a, a background. And I can just do it like this. And again, I'm putting this on the page. And I'm going to give it a color. So I'm going to properties and I'm going to fill. And as, as you can see on the fill, I don't have an orange. Okay. So I can, I can make up one, um, you know, by simply clicking on 
a color and I can mix up my own color, give me an orange. Something like that. Um, but they want a little bit darker orange, a little redder. Okay, so I'm just kind of mixing my own color. That's too red, red. Okay, so I can I can do something like that. Okay. Um, which kind of got rid of my magenta. So let me just step back. We'll make it a new color first. So plus, and now we can, we should probably be mixing it. Now, um, you can, you can duplicate them just by kind of right clicking also. And I'm just going to blend this in real quick. A little bit more red, oh, orange in there. Okay, so we'll call that, that's close, but it's not, not perfect yet. Um, so we could do something like that. We'll get that in. Let me just get me that top of this up here. Just like I said, it updated overnight with me. So I'm like trying to make sure everything is where it used to be. Okay. Uh, what what did change with the update, by the way? Do you know? <sighs> From what it looked like, it was some user interface um, items. I didn't go through everything yet. Um, it's a it's a new version, meaning it's this is InDesign 2022. Um, so it is a quote update as opposed to just kind of like a little minor tweak when you get that like you know right. 0.2.223 or whatever. Um, from what I read initially, it's just kind of some user interface um, helping it to work a little bit better with some of the other programs, and then also um, allow it to kind of export into kind of, I don't wanna call it flash, but you can export publications into kind of a digital format that will, um, you can put it on a website to kind of interact. So you can kind oh, of- Oh, like, like WebMDs and stuff? What's that? Like a WebMDs and stuff like that? Yeah, like yeah. Audio video files? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, that's what I've read so far. I haven't gotten into it too much, um, but I believe that's, what they're doing with this um for the most part everything you know the text boxes and that kind of stuff all that seems the same okay and i didn't see anything new well this is a uh, gradient feather tool i don't recall this one but maybe it was there again it's, it's one of those things I, I know i haven't used a lot um at all so i don't know if this is a new thing or not let me just see what it does um, oh, so it does a little gradient like that. And you can kind of adjust. <clears throat> oh, that's good. Cool. That seems pretty neat. Yeah, that's kind of could be something down the lines. Let me get rid of that now. Um, all right, I'm just do, do, do. look at this. Okay, <clears throat> to, we mixed this color CMYK. Um, so I made a new color, but it's like, it's not quite perfect. So I wanna get into um, what we call the swatch books. Now you can see we can do um, RGB or CMYK. Okay, and that, that kind of, you know, depends on your mix and get a little bit closer. It seems like uh, when you're doing something like that, you can see it. Do you get this little like um, explanation point? That's just saying, this is out of gamma warning meaning. Um, it's going to be hard for the printer to print that color. 
that makes sense because sometimes when they're so far up on the extreme uh, they only can print like this much but you know obviously the, the eye visually we can see a much larger area so if you what you're doing is clicking and it's going to bring it back to more of a, a level that can be processed now one way around that is to go down here to what we call the panatone colors and i know we've talked about panatone um, and basically it's a um, <clears throat> series of colors um, put out by the panatone group and and they're basically inks that can be um, replicated worldwide with just certain numbers so i'm going to go with the solid color so you can see there's solid coated uncoated metallics neons um, there's a CMYK equivalent. So if you're going to print CMYK, um, you can find the equivalent to what that would be. Okay, so these are, are what we call spot colors, okay, as opposed to process. So up here it says process, but spot is a, a special color they're going to print individually. So um, an example, like the Coca-Cola here, the red, this is a spot color. Okay, so they particularly they will mix up this color of red. It's unique to Coca-Cola, meaning everything that Coke does has that same color. And in fact, they'll even like the lid has got a Panatone matching red. So it all matches. So whenever they're printing these anywhere in the world, they make the same color. Okay, they're not kind of guessing as to what is what um, in there. So the Panatone colors allows us to do that. These are other color systems, which I've never used. I've never used this Toyo or um, HKS. Web colors are web colors. So if you're going to be on web, you can do that. Um, but these are here. So if I click on this, you can see these are coming up with the Panatone colors and, and they match other Panatone and it gives us a CMYK equivalent. So if I put this here and I double click, right there, you can see it says C46M8. That's magenta. Y is zero. And we get to pop back up again. And then K, black is 22. So if the, if the printer mixes, that will mix up into that color. Okay. Now these uh, coded or uncoded, coded means it's got kind of a sheen on it. Uncoded doesn't. Okay. Um, typically I will go with the coded colors. And again, you start to see these numbers start to pop up all the time, you know, 7571 or et cetera. These are all um, Panatone color. And you can see this over here. This is telling me that it's going to be a kind of a spot color. So I'm going to look through here for that orange. Let me find my yellow oranges. Here we go. So I'm just kind of trying to visually match that color. That's not bad. That's pretty close. All right, so I'm going to pick that one. I'm going to basically, um, I'm going to add it. Okay, so now I see this here at Panatone 655, 1655. So that's telling me that that's a, a, a Panatone color as opposed to these where you can see these are mixed. Okay, now what the printer will oftentimes do if you print this in here, he'll say, hey, do you really want that spot color? If not, he'll do a, a duplicate to find the equivalent to that. Um, because if you print a, a spot color, um, it costs extra. Okay, I'm just gonna get rid of that. Okay, so depending on the color, um, you know, and again, companies do have certain colors that they always use because that's their color. So if you see somebody say, um, hey, we use PMS 1182. PMS is Panatone matching system, so it's the Panatone color. And then you'll look up 1182 in your, your swatches and add that to your color palette. Okay, so it's something that they are, they're using um, over and over and over again as their kind of color. You know, like Twitter has their blue and that type of thing. So there's certain colors that the companies have um, notified or has marked down as this is what we use. So everybody that uses. So if I'm working, doing a job for Twitter, they're going to tell me, hey, we use our blue is Panatone 1682. So then I would find Panatone 1682 and either use it or use the, the equivalent in CMYK. 
and I can look that up in books, all right? I have these like Panatone color swatch books and they, they look just like paint swatches, paint swatch books with that. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not saying you need to get a pair of swatch books at this point. At some point you may, and just to show you, this is the Panatone. Um, and it kind of become like the uh, worldwide color system. And they'll come up with um, like the colors of the year or what's coming up. What do they um, see as um, colors that are coming in? So they'll have like the fall set. And then these are the swatch books you can buy. Okay. Um, so if you, you're going to encounter these in the, in the world of design, and you also see stuff where they'll go into like plastics and so forth. So they'll have a Panatone plastic book or, or color series of cosmetics and hardware. So we're, they're all using the same system, but sometimes there's a little bit different code on it, but that's really what they're doing. Um, they even trade it. They're expensive, trust me. You, you know, uh, when you need to get one, um, you know, you, you need to get it, but you kind of like really take care of them. So you can see here, just the CMYK, convert it or co code it and uncode it. This is kind of what, what I would use to match is 177 bucks. So it's pretty, pretty expensive. Um, I have, I think one of these essential guides I picked up at some point. Um, it doesn't really go bad. Sometimes the colors will slightly fade if you, they're not kind of kept close or in the, you don't want to put it in the sunlight or anything like that. But it's just kind of something the company said. And then sometimes they'll have this kind of book where they can actually cut out the swatches. So you'll sometimes attach the color swatch uh, to a, a printout so the, the client can look at it and make sure it's the right color that they want, that type of thing. Um, and they've got, again, a whole series of stuff that you can buy here. And then they even have cool stuff. I don't know where somewhere in here they'll have... Um, Panatone color mugs and all that kind of stuff. But is all their stuff is trademarked. So don't like kind of take it and make it your own. Cause trust me, they'll, they'll come after you like everybody else, right? So if you're consumer products, how to license it. We'll see. That's gonna be how to do it, right? So here's the mugs, drinking bottles. So these are people, some company has kind of contracted with them to do it. So you probably have seen this kind of stuff around. Um, and then these are companies that currently have licenses to use or replicate their stuff. Um, okay. Um, so Panatone, mark it in your, your list of things to maybe look for. All right, so we've got this and we're gonna have a picture and a picture and then some text. Um, we've we've kind of matched our color pretty good there. And we've got basically a photo and photo. So I'm just gonna kind of etch it in. It looks like it's a full bleed, a little bit of gap at the top. So there's a photo here. And then there's another photo over here. And again, we may do two photos. We may just make it all one. I'm not sure. There is a, a header on the pages, which we haven't done. Right? We haven't done anything on the master pages. That's where you would do that. Same thing with the page number. Um, we'll get to that. I just want to kind of get our layouts going first. Um, and then over here is a, a text box. Something somewhere in here. All right. And then there's two more another text box over here. And again, just kind of roughing it in. And another one over here. I know they're not completely perfect, but that's there. And then there was actually a pull quote. So this box is a little bit shorter with another pull quote in. So again, I'm kind of just blocking it out to do that. Now we don't have an article, um, so let me real quick go on the internet and find us an article to do. Um,
No, that one got all weird there. That's pretty much on off. There we go. So I'm just gonna grab this text. I know it's got some hyperlinks in there, but it's okay. We've got, it looks like it's more than enough text. And come back over here and I'm just gonna drop it in, Command D. I know I've got overflow, right? I got my red square with my, my plus on it. So I need to, I'll build that over. And then I'm also gonna build it over to here. So let me just kind of put in my other text boxes. So we have, it's kind of a three column spread. So we're just gonna kind of duplicate that box over to here. Pretty tight. And then there's two more over here. Did we get a phone call from France? We're getting a phone call from France. Yeah. Should answer it. Who's calling me from France? Hope they leave a message. I'll let you know. Uh, and we've got a couple of pictures. We're gonna, I'll leave on the picture, but I just want to get the text in. <clears throat> so um, zooming up here. I've loaded it, right? I've clicked on the plus, put it over here. I'm gonna click on the plus, load it up here. I got it more, click on the plus. Now I'm gonna bring it down here. And I'm gonna click on the plus, load it up here. And that is the end. <clears throat> so um, we haven't filled it all in, but we, maybe we will. We'll see here as we get things put together. Um, put in some, other oh, LMs. All right, we'll scale this down a little bit. And then we're gonna put this kind of visit Sequoia. We're gonna just kind of do a text here. Just do visit. That's gonna be my title. And I'm gonna have Sequoia. So again, you're gonna go through, select your typefaces. Um, Computer. Okay. And let me just see here. There he goes. Okay, they're kind of a nice classy serif. Yeah, I'm gonna make that white. And let's see here. I got a bold. I'm gonna actually obviously enlarge that. And I'm not quite crazy about that. So let me see if I can find something else I like. Over here. So as you can see, finding types typically is kind of one of the longer processes to go through, um, but it's well worth it. Well worth taking your time to go through and find the typefaces that just kind of fit perfectly for what what is trying to be communicated, um, <clears throat> not only through the words, but also stylistically through the design itself. Okay. Um, you know, because every little typeface says something a little bit different. You know, this says something different than this. Okay. It still says Sequoia, but the way the type is made, um, you know, said this definitely looks old fashioned, right? So, um, you know, going through and picking the right typeface, it kind of matches the style that you're uh, working with is important. Um, give me one sec. I don't want to spend all day looking at typefaces, but I'll find something quickly. Come on. Move. I'm going to put, yeah, that looks nice. There's a couple of things in there. So I'm going to go with the black. Okay. And that is made in white. I'm going to actually make that a little bit larger because I got the room. 
70 point. Again, a lot of this is just kind of visual, right? You're gonna put this together visually how you in see it. And then we're gonna do the visit. I'm gonna use the same uh, typeface. Okay, so up here. So again, as you start to use typefaces, they'll be at the top, right? So the ones you've just recently used will be at the top. And we'll put that at 60. And we'll make that black also. They used it way bigger. So <clears throat> I'm going to bump it up. I'm just going to type it. So it only goes up to presets to 72, but obviously you can do anything you want after that. Just kind of make it, put it in, type in a number. All right, so I'm bumping it up to there. Pull this one down. I'm going to type, I'm going to kind of keep my boxes as small as possible. That way, when I'm like clicking around, I don't click things by accident. Um, and they have a kind of something like this. It's going to be a photo. So I'm going to now bring down or pull over my text. And let me see what they did over there. Okay, they kind of made a bump around. I'm not going to match that, but you, the, what's nice here, I like this kind of thing where it's justified on the right. It's just a little bit something a little bit different. So I can do that. And that that's kind of a nice item there. So um, I'm just going to justify that right. Okay. And you see by clicking on like that, I'm not changing anything else on the rest of the document. I'm just changing it in this kind of paragraph box that we have here. Okay. And I think I even got some room to make this sequoia a little larger. I'm just manually bumping it up a little bit. And there was some nice overlap coming on. Just do something like that. Again, we're just looking at that juxtaposition of how those things kind of go together. Um, and again, go to preview mode, right? That's going to kind of turn off everything else and let you kind of see what you're doing there. Okay, so okay, that's not too bad. Well, we, we can kind of work with that to get going. Um, and then we've got pictures, right? So I'm gonna just put in some pictures, Command D. I know I've got um, Sequoia on here. Sequoia, 19, 18s. Looking to see which ones are gonna be the better ones. A lot of these are unprocessed. So you can see it won't put in the NEF, the NEF with the raw files, right? So it won't import raw files. So you're gonna have to, in theory, you know, there's a lot going on here. If I open this picture up in Photoshop, I would go through, edit it, bring out the shadows, et cetera, um, and then bring that picture in. So I'm just gonna find for now, just some stuff that works without having to do a lot of editing. Okay, so there's one. I'm gonna do a command D, bring in another picture. What do we got going on down here? Yeah, put the kid in. Okay. Now again, I'm clicking on the picture. I'm gonna enlarge the picture itself because I just want kind of her in there. Little one turns 10 next week. Unbelievable. Um, and we never picked our paragraph type yet. So let me zoom in and see what we got going on here. Over here, they just did, they did a sans serif, it looks like. So we'll do the same. I'm gonna select through and I've selected that. And let me just come through and double click again. So basically to get everything, just kind of keep clicking. Okay, so if you just click once, it does the word, three times does the line, four times does the paragraph, and then like five times clicking gives you the whole article. Okay, so this way, if you're changing the typeface, it will change everybody. Um, if we go back to music, so we've been using that. So this article, that paragraph is there. I want this one to be, 
back to where everything else is. Um, Oh, there are links. It's a paragraph. That's what that did that. Mm, we'd have to unlink that. Yeah, well, well now nah, we'll just keep it. I don't want to spend an hour doing this thing. So I'm going to select it all here and I'm going to give it a justified. Okay, again, this is where you're going to want to go through. Like, we've got a couple hyphens here. They're looking kind of ugly, in my opinion. So, one, I could either open my text box up a little bit. Maybe that'll get rid of some. And it did, right? Just that little eighth of an inch kind of pulled it out. So, I've got still a few, but I don't have as many. Um, and again, I can come back through and, and change these by holding shift and return. It's giving me a force. But then, if I do that, I get that. See? And I did that again. He said, get that huge gap, which you don't want. Okay. So a lot of times it's kind of going through what's going to work and how can I adjust my boxes to minimize. And obviously the smaller the box, the more possible hyphenations. If you're in a pretty good column, you'll get them, but it won't be as bad. Um, you know, and then this is like a, a, like in here, this is like a hyphen, not a hyphen. It's a, a M dash, which is a dash between between things. So on a computer, typically you do a hyphen, but this is an M dash, a little bit different, a little bit longer, as you can see, compared to the hyphen just below. Um, you know, so I could either, yeah. See, that's doing up your M dash, M dash. So you got, I, I'm not going to play with that, but I would want to get rid of some of those kind of things. Um, and even things like here, the word Sequoia to, I'm going to probably push that because it's, I want to keep that word together. We're talking about the sequoia, so I don't want to get too much in it. Um, um, I'm going to just pull this quote out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to make this a pull quote like they did on theirs. And basically what they did is they made something larger, right? It's kind of a kind of thing to get your visual interest. It's too big um, like that. And they used the same, let me just see, they use the same quote. They use a different typeface in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I'm just gonna put in a, a alternate typeface. So again, this is where you can call these things out in your style sheets. You can kind of set this up and you can imagine for this is not a big deal, but if you had like a huge, uh, volume of articles, um, you would want to do that. Okay. And then they did a quote, just that was kind of like a designerly quote. In fact, I'm going to put this in a color. Okay. And they did a, a little quote up here. So they did a, a, a quote. Yeah, we're just kind of using that as a reference. Um, and we'll, we'll just give it a color. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of move it around to fit where I want. Don't like that at all. I'm gonna put the quotes here on this. Okay. Not the perfect, but it that'll work for now. Okay, and pull that up in there, maybe just a little bit smaller. Okay. Zoom back out and check our progress. So this is where we are, right? So we we, we had this over here as a reference. It's not the same, but we're kind of using it as a guy. They have some um, subheads in there that those orange lines are. And we can do that.
So again, they're they're kind of using it um, like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to a new font just for that. You know, this one's got a ton of stuff in there. And I'm gonna give it the color. Again, they're using kind of color as a um, spot. Now it's a little tight, and I'm gonna actually loosen that up a little bit. Spread it out, maybe 100 is too much. Go back to 75. Um, so we're just kind of building in those kind of subheads that they're doing, right? And they're doing it actually something like that where they've got a subhead and then they've got the article going up, okay? So you can put those in and hopefully that they've written them in for you guys, okay? And I'm gonna put another one in here. I'm gonna just use the same one. So I'm gonna do it here again. And we now need to move our text over. And we've got, is that it? I'm gonna do another pull quote. So in this case, I'm gonna just kind of put a pull quote in. And I wanna match it to this. Again, I'm just kind of put stuff so I can kind of figure out what this was. That was the Embercom regular at 20 point. Just kind of working this through. Again, if I had set this up with my style sheets, it makes it so much easier, right? So I'm trying to match it all up and figure out what it was and go through it. And I think it was, was it bold? No, it wasn't regular. Okay. And it was also orange. So again, this is where the style sheets really come in. The style and character styles come into handy. I'm put it up there. I'm get rid of this. Now, what I'm going to do is here. I want the text to kind of go around this, right? So I'm going to put this here in play, and I'm going to go to. Um, Oops, didn't want to do that. Just highlight it and went down in size. We're at 20 points. Okay, so we're going to. So what I'm doing is kind of building up layers to keep this text box around, right? So I want this to be, have a wrap around. So I'm going to want to get rid of that extra gap. And then I'm going to put this, oops, I want to move that one. So get the right box, put this here. And I'm gonna move that Range that send backward. Let me do it this way. Let me send this to the front. What I'm doing is I'm going to bring these two items together and allow them to kind of work as one kind of box. Focus on down down here. 
Yes, I'm just looking, I changed some stuff here. After that. Okay. I'm going to give this a little gap. As such object arrangement. What the right front in the front? All right, we'll figure it. They, they changed something here. I used to be able to just kind of drop it in and it would keep it there with that other box in place. It's kind of like building things up, but it's not. It's saying send to the back. I want it to the front. I'm trying to do basically used to be able to link these together and keep it around. Um, Leave that away. I'm trying to give it a buffer space. Um, All right, we'll figure this out. Let me just, I'm just gonna build a gap then. I'm gonna do the poor man's way of doing it. Not as tidy, but it'd work. And make this bigger. Am I, is this making sense, everybody? I know I'm battling here because they changed some things around on me, but. Yeah, it's making sense. Okay. Um, and then we're going to double click here. Oops. Load that over there. Okay, so now we've got most of our text laid out. Um, we've got that reference. We've got this reference. Again, it's not the same, but we're, we're you know, we get an idea. And then we're dropping in some pictures. And they've got some little pull quotes up here. So I'm just going to put in a couple more photos just to kind of get that going. And they're doing some kind of system here. Okay, so just kind of, and then there's some quotes, with some captions, there's even some text going over here on the side. So let me just kind of we'll drop some pictures in real quick. Command D or place. I didn't want, that's not a good picture. And so that works that way. There's a lot of trees in Sequoia, just so you know. We did have some fires, we burnt up some trees. Some of those, these Sequoias that you see got devastated in the fire the the big ones like general grant that's like the largest tree in the world um that that did okay um but some of the other ones didn't do as well and people say fire is good yes fire is good for the sequoias they need them but this fires were burning so intense so hot that even the trees natural protection with their thick bark um, <clears throat> was not holding up. There's a pretty coyote. 
Leave that as is. So as you can see, it doesn't take too, too long to go through, but you know, you want to take your time going through it. Um, you know, get your pictures kind of um, situated, um, but go through it, right? Get your pictures, crop them, do what you need to make sure they're in the right orientation. Um, go through and do your um, Photoshop adjustments on those photos. So everything kind of works um, with that. And I'm gonna move this over there. Um, go to preview. And you can start to see, right? We've got that cover. This is a four page spread. So it's just an article with that goes on longer, right? Um, and then down here, we've got our two page article going on. But again, we're using these things as references. You're gonna kind of go through and adjust. Um, you know, maybe you wanna put some color behind it again or not. That's really up to you. Um, and not something to think about while here, this background is a color. Sometimes you might click it by accident. It's, it's fine to come in here to layers and then you can see that's right there because it's got that little blue tint, a little blue box. You can lock that, okay? So that way you won't accidentally click it and it gets in your way. Remember the layers are working only for that spread. Okay, so this set of layers is only for that. When I come down to here, I get a different set of, of layers because I'm working with this spread. Okay, so there's layers for one spread and then layers for another spread. Um, makes it a little bit easier, but again, it's kind of you know nice to be able to come in and sometimes something like this lock it. And that's really how you would colorize the page. Because remember, typically the paper is white um, that we're working with. Now you can get color papers, of course. Um, and you might spec out something like maybe natural brown or something like that. Um, and there again, there's thousands of papers out there that can be picked also for your project. So don't forget paper as a, a possible way of um, changing the project up, adding texture, um, whether it's smooth and silky, um, you know, those kind of things make a big difference, tactile things. Um, you know, so don't ignore paper as you start to work as a designer that you can pick out certain papers um, that will work a little bit better, give you a little bit cleaner shine or even sometimes a little bit cleaner printing depending on how they print them and so forth. Um, but as you can see, we've got kind of our layout started to go and we'll come back through and we'll still need to do master pages. So I wanna put page numbering in and stuff like that, but and we still have a back cover. Okay, and we'll work on that. Um, Thursday, I think back cover is going to be kind of maybe just some images and maybe some like, I, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, what's going to be in the next issue type of thing. So it's maybe kind of a preview of what's to come. Uh, oftentimes in magazines, you'll see them near the back um, or there's some kind of little special, little kind of tiny little article about something. Um, I don't know, I get the AAA magazine, oftentimes like at the end, they'll put in like these pic old pictures of how California used to be. 50 years ago, 100 years ago. Um, and there's a little article about, you know, hey, you know, this is Hollywood from 100 years ago. So we'll work, we will work on that come next class. Okay. So, questions? Today's demo. Remember, get reference. Reference is key. Okay, reference will, will help you along and help you to kind of make decisions and um, allow you to get layouts and things that you hadn't thought of. Okay, so get that visual reference, that visual inspiration um, going for you. Okay, that's gonna be kind of important as we go. Um, all right, questions? Let's check for attendance here. Questions? Yeah, no, I'm feeling pretty solid and good about it, honestly. And this is due on the 8th too, right? So we still got a little bit of time to... Yes, is that yes. Right? 
Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, we got more than a week. Mm, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Questions about that? Does it make sense? Yeah, you know, it all seems to make sense so far. Finding pictures, you're finding articles. You know, again, pick, I, I would always recommend pick a theme in this case that you like. Does that make sense? If you like skateboarding, do a skateboarding magazine. If you, if you like cooking, do a cooking magazine. Um, you know, if you like driving, do a driving or car magazine type of thing, whatever. Because um, you're going to find better pictures. You're going to be more into it. Um, you'll take the time to, to process the photos and Photoshop. And all. It's kind of like bringing it all together, right? Um, and, and likewise, if you have an illustration or you want to do one, do it, right? If you want to do some kind of really cool poster for the, I don't know, the Long Beach Auto Race, do one and you can put that in as part of your article type of thing. So mm -hmm. it can use this kind of a place you can showcase some of the things you've picked up this semester. Anything else, Anything, guys? I don't think so. I'm just going to get back to work. All right. Um, thanks. All right. See you Wednesday. Okay. That's it, guys. I'll see you Wednesday. We're going to post or send those to me. I'm going to do my stuff on my side and we'll keep it going. All right. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good week. Or actually, good. see you Wednesday. We're not see done yet. Thank you, Professor. Thank you.